Yeah, welcome to Community Matters uh, here on a given Wednesday with Mark Say. He joins us from Antwerp in Belgium, half a world away. And we're talking about his movie, Youth City Hall, uh, which was selected in the Colorado uh, Environmental Film Festival, along with our movie, Spiraling Crisis. And so that's we, we got that's how we got to know Mark. We were in an interview together. Um, they interviewed the two of us and we batted it back and forth for a while. And that was a Great experience. Welcome to the show, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me here. So I guess the, the first question is, um, you know, you're in Belgium. Um, you're, what, what did you tell me, you're two, three, four thousand kilometers away from uh, Ukraine. Uh, what's the reaction to the Ukrainian invasion in Belgium? Yeah, well, the, the reaction is, uh, is much like in uh, the most countries of, of Europe now. Uh, basically afraid of what is going to happen, uh, seeing that Putin has put the nuclear uh, uh, has put the nuclear step on the table, uh, and so that the war will spill over to Middle and Western Europe also. Uh, and uh, as other countries have done too, we, uh, as a country, or uh, rather our government, is now supporting the people in the Ukraine with extra weaponry and uh, other kinds of support. Uh, but of course, since the Ukraine is not part of NATO uh, and will not be part of NATO, as I understand the European uh, uh, debate on this, uh, it cannot call in uh, Article 5 of, the, of NATO and then uh, send in troops of uh, all the members there, which for the moment is keeping off uh, oh, yeah, a much larger scale war, uh, like World War Three, you could say. So that is still not on the agenda, but you never know where we are going to end up if people uh, keep thinking in, in terms of uh, war and escalating uh, power, uh, escalating power uh, combat, uh, actually. Um, yeah, of course, what is going on in the Ukraine itself is, is horrible for the people there. Uh, Refugees now over, uh, is it already over a million? I wouldn't be surprised, uh, fleeing the country, uh, but openly received and welcomed by the Poles and uh, everybody else, uh, basically, in Europe. So that in itself is a good thing. Uh, but the people in Kiev now, they, they must go through through hell now. That's, that's for sure. And I'm hoping that diplomacy will still uh, get back on track so that uh, on the one hand, the, the Europeans or the, the European leaders will listen a bit more carefully to Putin's uh, frustration over the expansion of NATO, which is one of his uh, main reasons to, to start this still, in my view, absurd uh, war. And then, of course, on the other hand, that by now, uh, Putin also should realize that economically he is being blocked on, uh, on pretty much every side except for uh, eurasia oh, except for asia where we don't know the the real decisions yet mm. that's that's how far i can get into uh, into the ukraine situation in a couple of minutes like, yeah one, one question though you're an educator in a school um in um in belgium and antwerp and i wonder if you could tell us how how the students feel how the kids feel how the younger generation feels about this yeah well i will be able to say more about that only next week i think uh, because uh, it's been this war has been going on, of course, ah, the buildup has been there for months and even years, you could say. Uh, but the actual war, the shooting and everything, that's only been a week. So I myself will will be teaching a bit or saying a bit to my uh, students in uh, in college uh, about it uh, after this uh, week of uh, holiday we're now in in Belgium, mm. uh, the, uh, the mm. spring holiday we have here. Well, maybe we can uh, no. maybe we can circle back with you later and find out how the how the things have changed because they will they undoubtedly no change. Yeah. Okay. So, Mark, tell us about your school and tell us the connection, um, um, you know, between your school and the movie that uh, that uh, was selected in the Environmental Film Festival, Youth City Hall. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, do not do not tell us in Flemish. Um, do not do not tell us in French. <laughs> okay. English would be good. <laughs> English would be good, I guess. Yeah, I will try to uh, will try to speak English uh, as good as I can. Uh, okay, so this movie uh, to our own college, 
Uh, it's a university college where I work and where I actually teach the teachers. That's what I do. And to, yeah, to, to modernize education, uh, to realize some things in secondary education, so schools, and uh, what we're after is the extended school for world citizens, actually, you know, uh, bringing together more theory and practice, also more science into citizenship and the neighborhood organizations, so that schools become the driving force for citizenship in neighborhoods, especially city neighborhoods, uh, urban education. This is, this is a bit the theory that we are now uh, developing in our UP uh, University College in Antwerp. And we're trying to, well, we have now realized in Antwerp city education that this uh, theory, this wealth theory, has now become official policy for the schools in Antwerp city, which now, so, so now this theory has become city level. Uh, which is a good thing. But to spread it further, we thought we needed something else, something else than just paper, books, manual, you know, uh, something that uh, gets the message, message across both nationally and internationally. And that's why we have made this movie. Uh, and we, we show what the theory is about or give an idea in the movie of what the theory is about. But we have taken as our uh, example, the ecological crisis, because we think that's the, the main crisis of today. And uh, this is also how to reach most youngsters. You, and, have, you, you start out with a level of awareness on the part of the students, or are you starting with a, so to speak, a clean slate? Uh, a clean slate it is not, because in this movie, uh, we have worked with the, the students of the sixth year, so the 18-year-olds, 17, 18, 19-year-olds, huh? uh, and they have had already some lessons or some classes before on uh, ecological matters, but not, uh, not as, we, as we actually wanted it within this theory of ours. So not directed at learning how to make a political choice on a major social fault line in society, which is the one between eco-modernists and the people advocating uh, system change. This, this takes them another step further uh, as 18 year olds. And I think this is what citizens actually should be able to do when they become adults, 18 year olds. That is being able to make a decent political choice on the major social fault lines so that they become critical citizens and have an eye for society and the world. Well, do you advocate specific actions or do you leave it to them to have this conversation and determine their own actions? Uh, I would say, of course, their own. Huh? Actions uh, in, this, in the structure of this type of project, uh, and this theory we have, there, there is room for actions to combine with action groups even. But, these have to be made and decided by the kids themselves. It is not the educator, it is not the school, it is not, um, it is not policy to you know, direct kids or youth into that or that political direction. It has to remain their own choice, that's for sure. Participating, and, uh, me and that means having your own say about what and how you're going to study and uh, involve yourself in this problematic, has to be in the hands of the students themselves. If not, we actually don't teach them to become critical self-dependent citizens, right? Yes, absolutely. So important. Um, so we have a trailer and uh, we'll play it in a moment, but can you tell us what to expect in the trailer? Yeah, the trailer shows uh, a couple of the main uh, scenes uh, where you will see that students are debating with one another. The yeah, hot topics, actually. Uh, you will also see that we try to give an idea of what the theory behind the thing is already in the trailer, just an idea. Uh, and you will also see that they are going on excursions, that science is involved, uh, but also that art is involved, uh, also that uh, the neighborhood, the parents are more involved, all things that school nowadays in cities are looking for to get more help, more support from the community, 
to teach the kids what they need to learn. Uh, and this already is in the trailer, and I hope that we that with this trailer people will will be sparked or will be or, or will get interested in, in watching the, the full movie, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's play the trailer. Ik denk dat jongeren eigenlijk te weinig op de hoogte zijn van politiek en al wat er gaande is. Jongeren, wij zitten in een tijdsnood. Onze toekomst staat op het spel. Men moet echt effectief actie ondernemen om de aandacht te trekken. Imagine schools would tackle the main problems of our time. What if there was a way? Ja, maar wacht eens even, we hebben nu een energieprobleem. We hebben nu een energietransitie te doen. Ja, we zijn een maquette aan het maken, een, een racebaan met een auto die onze economie representeert. En dat stevend eigenlijk af op onze natuur. Ja. Ik denk dat ze daardoor ook veel sterker in de maatschappij staan. Ook veel meer weten over de omgeving waar ze in leven. En waar dat eigenlijk speelt gewoon weg in onze stad. De grootste impact dat je als één persoon kan hebben, is je eigenlijk aan te sluiten bij een burgerbeweging. Consumenten om duurzame producten te kopen en voor producten. Die markt die is zijn falen voor voor ons. World education learning for tomorrow is team teaching for a better world. Yeah, that helps, Mark, to understand the vitality of these kids. Uh, impressive. And I, I think I know the answer, but I'll ask you, what kind of reaction did you have um, to the kids that you approached to participate uh, and the kids who approached to help you make the film? Well, I think uh, as the, the research student of our college says in the movie, because she researched what the kids were really thinking and how they were evolving throughout the year long project. She actually said that it is obvious for the kids that this is actually extra value to their uh, training, to their, uh, to their schooling, you know? So it's not just simply that they liked it, which was also quite obvious, uh, but very much that they understood that this was extra value to schooling, that it made schooling for them more active and more well, fascinating is maybe over the top, but more interesting, you know, uh, going to do stuff outside of school with what you learned, connecting to civil movements, researching things and doing service learning, all these things which nowadays they are around here and there. And also all these modernization aspects of, of people like me looking to improve education also. And, as far as we can, all these things are around. But what we have tried to do is to put this into one type, well type of project so that these kids could actually see what all these things that they have sometimes heard about, if you bring them together in a decent way, can actually mean for them. And I think they understood. So did you, did you have the participation of the whole school, all the forms and classes, all the grades, or was it a, a selected class and grade and, and group yes. of students? It is always a selected uh, group and, and grade. Um, this was the sixth year, both uh, vocational, uh, general, technical strand, tracks of education. And it was all the teachers of all school subjects working together on this project, but only for uh, the 18 year olds, so for the six years, not the others, because this type of project, uh, the design we have and the content that it has is too difficult for 14, even 16 year olds. 
it was really directed at 16 at 18 year olds so that the school subjects could couple their content to the theme of the project yes perfect now what, what about other schools i mean we're i assume this is only your school but but maybe there are other schools around that uh, were or could be or will be interested in the same process that uh, the same experience um tell us about how you think this might expand out yeah well there are now already in antwerp since it has become official policy uh, there are now already more than 20 schools working like this or having projects like this in their program they're starting of course because it's very recent material here uh, so, but there are already 21 schools uh, in Antwerp city working this way, but on the level of university colleges where you have the teacher training programs, there we now try to get the theory uh, across, that is to, to explain what it is about, to share the results, to show what the theory uh, contains, that is what we are now doing in the uh, yeah, in what we call here a professionalizing trajectory. This is a, a trajectory uh, for professionals that they can uh, follow to understand the theory and to apply it themselves in uh, their uh, universities or uh, colleges. Ah, that so is maybe right now. so maybe it goes to Brussels. Uh, maybe it goes to other cities in Belgium. Maybe it goes to other countries. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm hoping and already I've got the question uh, that may well a question from somebody involved on a high level in Brussels that maybe we will start to do it for Brussels too. Uh, but of course, and this is what we have tried in the movie actually, that is the sh to show the most generic aspects of the theory. So the things that can be applied in other countries and other cities too. And hopefully, uh, some other countries or some other cities in other countries uh, will be interested so that it spreads because we think uh, that getting youth in, involved, especially in the ecological crisis now, uh, or in the activism that is around there, is, is going to be is going to be crucial to get the right policies uh, put through to to get the, the right the right ideas about how how to yeah, how to, to, to get back uh, to a societal uh, development that is beneficial for all. I think it is crucial that youth steps in, get, uh, gets involved, does things, but of course, with the necessary knowledge and the necessary schooling. Because if not, then, then of course, crazy, crazy things can happen too. Yes, well, we know. Um, what, what about the language format? I assume it's in English, but um, you have titles in other languages? Uh, we have subtitled the movie in English, and we have on our website, uh, wellcenter.org, we, we got also a manual that it has been translated in English. Uh, that's the language we, we use, but we don't have the money nor the capacity to, uh, to translate all our stuff into other languages now. We're using English as the second language. Flemish still is the language in which most of our things are explained. Uh, but English is here and there so that there are uh, sufficient things that or sufficient means to get the message across uh, across borders also. So uh, we at Think Tech are familiar with um, the, the learning curve about making a film, an environmental film, a documentary film. Um, you were essentially in the middle of the project, so you had a certain amount of resource available to you. But can you describe the process by which you know, from where you started to where you ended, how you made the movie, who you called upon, the resources you used, the organizational skills and, you know, academic uh, track you built for it, um, and how it was as an experience to make this film. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let's say that the preparation took, took more than a decade. Not directed at the movie, but reading reading up and into the ecological crisis or being busy with the environment that's something that with me already dates back to when i was just a student in university myself that goes way way back and i followed this the, the the discussions on the environment and ecological crisis ever since um and of course once people like thunberg came to the front i got into it much more 
that's the effect of uh, of of this uh, this youngster on me i really got involved there and uh, i started to dig in deeper and got also into the scientific side of, of things more and uh, so the preparation took a long long time you could say you you need to do this because if not then you're uh, then you leave yourself open to all kinds of criticism you you have to be you know when you state fact you have to be correct when you you have when you speak about planetary boundaries you have to be able to explain what that is when you speak about uh, things like problem shifting or uh, cost shifting or rebound effects in this uh, in this matter or this thing you you really need to know what you're talking about so that that's one and then two for the movie itself that was already cooking for uh, uh, let's say six years because before I made a same kind of movie on the refugee question but I knew that this ecological question was going to resurface again and it did uh, again. Uh, and when that happened, I said, okay, now let's go for this too. And uh, then I wrote a book on this uh, theory, this well theory, and I started to make preparations for the movie. And first thing that I needed to know was, will I have the necessary funding to, to get at least two professionals on board? At least two so that we could also work with two cameras and I, that I also had a professional editor, which is uh, my, my wife, uh, actually, um, that I had two professionals on board. And we got necessary funding thanks to, well, on the one hand, App University College in, uh, in Antwerp, but also the, the free thinkers uh, of, of Flanders, who, who uh, yeah, invested some money, but then also the, the Knowledge Center for World Citizenship in Brussels uh, and the, the city system of Antwerp education. All these combined, they, they made it possible to get these people on board and pay them, for, uh, pay them half time for a whole year, to, to put it that way. If you got that, you got some possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the project design for this project I had to develop, and that took about a year, a year and a half, where all the preparation that I did, like for 10, 10 up to you 15 years, you know, I had to summarize and translate that into the language or the possibilities of these kids, 18-year-olds. So it had to be understandable for both the teachers there, but also for the kids. I had to be able to be in there also and explain them what it was about, on their level, which was a pretty hard thing to do, I must say. Uh, but okay, I think we got away with it. Uh, and all of that combined, uh, yeah, started to, well, we saw, okay, it's possible. We tried it first with other people to, to start up, but that didn't work uh, too well. But then with these two people, so my wife and a former friend uh, of hers, uh, which uh, with whom she's still working, Ramas Melashvili, which is a, a very, very good cameraman. Uh, and he's actually a visual artist. Um, these two people, of course, helped me out on, on every technical front. Also, what I did was just uh, put, put this design for this project together, so the educational side. And I was uh, just helping out uh, by showing, look, if you go and film this and this and this scene there, we will probably get the necessary things. I knew this in advance, but I'm not really, like you would say, a, a director knowing exactly which scene, because it was also not played, right? It was in real time film. Spontaneous, sure. A spontaneous thing, yes. And uh, so that the directing part for me was quite easy, actually. I had my project design. I knew which scenes were going to come, so which phases in the theory described how the movie actually was going to look what it was going to look like so in broad strokes that was that was my part to to, to uh, you know to to do with the brush uh, uh, that was my part but then everything else was up to these uh, two professionals huh? uh, they made the uh, yeah they make the the material and then eventually uh, the editing is, uh, is super and uh, so the investment was every bit uh, worthwhile and people now or that have seen the movie, I can honestly say, are very glad that we made it, and uh, actually are very happy to make the to make the investment. So altogether, it's quite fine. Yeah. 
Well, where are you on the uh, the distribution uh, of the movie? Uh, is it out in public? Uh, I know it's in the film festival, but um, there's yeah. a certain control on how far you can distribute it. Where, where is it now? And, and can our viewers find it and see it? And if not immediately, then when? Uh, they can. Uh, they can uh, apply for a screening on our website, uh, weldcenter.org. Uh, uh, there, you, there they can find the official movie page and the button where to apply for uh, a screening. They can. Uh, but for the moment, we are organizing uh, screenings uh, a bit all over Antwerp. And we're building up to some uh, academic conference also, together with some social organizations. Uh, so we are slowly building up now. We have done a couple of, um, well, as you know, of course, too. Uh, we have done a couple of uh, film festivals uh, where it was also was quite well received. Uh, but apart from that, we haven't done much uh, for distribution yet. We want to see where to go first and who who we encounter. You know, like you for that. This was this was just super great. The interview we had for Kev there yes. and with your uh, movie uh, Spiraling uh, Crisis. Uh, this was a very good conversation, and I knew content wise also. That it would be a good uh, a good match, and this is the way I want to proceed. N not not looking for you know making making money or anything like that, but looking for the right connections. Where does it click content wise, so that we we can you know globally even start building a, yeah a, a network or a, a community more or less that has more or less the same ideas is working well, even from different angles on same topics and everything this to me is much more interesting you know so you know it, it, it suggests i mean first you did migrants and that is a very important has been and will remain and especially yeah. in view of um, you know, the refugees coming from ukraine which aren't yeah. going back to ukraine right away um so that was migrants is an ongoing topic and certainly climate change uh, and environment is an ongoing topic. So my question to you is this, certainly, certainly, Mark, you're not done here. Certainly there's more in the pipeline. You have other plans. Can you talk about it? Well, for as far as movie world is concerned, I think maybe two things. I would very much like to also do a movie on the open society because I, I think there are basically three social fault lines in our global society that need the attention of the public, the priority of politics actually, which is the ecological question and the ecological crisis. Uh, also inequality, people that you know want uh, more equality, people that don't want any kind of clash, but also the, the open versus the closed society, the rise of the extreme right, you know. Uh, this I also wanna do a movie about, but also through the eyes or through the through a, an educational project, huh? the, the same thing. This is one idea, so to do a movie on that. And another idea that I've got is, uh, I, I already have a title, uh, The Dialogue. I want to have uh, inter, uh, interfaith or inter-worldview dialogue in a school with kids talking about these three main problems and just the dialogue and around it also the structure of this theory you know that this wealth project thing that but that is just in the background and we focus on these kids having this dialogue seeing what their emotions are what their thoughts are and the exchange between that what what do they really believe things will be in the future for them considering these three big problems how do they see the future where are they going the dialogue is, is what I got in mind. That is like a second idea for things concerning the movie world. Oh, I love it. I love it because, um, you know, they are the future. They are the leaders of the future. They will they will save us, hopefully. Uh, okay. and, 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 you know, what we can't do, they can do. And uh, this uh, it's not only a, a reportage 
um, of, of, of what they are doing and how they think. It's also affecting how they think and encouraging them, incentivizing them to go forward. Uh, to say to say nothing about the schools in, in in general. I mean, if you can motivate the schools to cover this um, and open their eyes, op expand their level of awareness using these films, uh, you've really made an impression on, um, on Antwerp, on Belgium, on Europe, and the world. So um, it seems to me that the 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 model you've designed here could apply to any number of issues, any number of um, discussions, and um, and um, it, it could be used again and again as as you perfect it, because I'm sure that's what will happen. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so, and I'm I'm very grateful to 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 be able to talk about it this year on your uh, on your show because this is the other side of the globe, right? And uh, this is the first time for me that I'm doing uh, yeah, that I'm doing a talk like this. This is just super to actually achieve these goals. You know, help achieve these goals. So, don't stop, Mark. Don't stop. You know, you, it seems like you're only beginning. You're only getting traction now, and uh, it's uh, it's really fabulous to see you do this and and to hear you talk. You know, the the, the concepts you describe, the you know production approaches you describe, they would apply anywhere, anywhere. They would certainly apply in Hawaii, and I would like to yeah. follow you in some way, or um, you know, consult with you and, and try to do something like that, um, because you know, uh, as you. I believe that video and film is a great way to disseminate knowledge and to incentivize yeah, people here. Yeah. Definitely. If I may say so, also your own movie, Spiraling Crisis, which I watched already uh, uh, a week ago now, I think. Uh, but still, this is a very important thing also here in Belgium. Huh? That is, when this uh, pandemic broke, uh, so the, the COVID thing came, already several critical people in uh, newspapers, but also magazines, they were they were saying and talking about yeah let's see how this COVID problem is going to change our thinking about our society because as in your movie it, you know uh, people also uh, see now that different uh, layers of society are touched or uh, in a different way so so rich and poor are are, are affected in different ways uh, because of this COVID thing. Um, you know, the, the poor in the cities, they get more diseases than the rich uh, in the suburbs, you know, that kind of thing. These things have come to the fore in the news, of course. It was inescapable. And uh, this thing, so the, the connecting thing between inequality, COVID, but also the ecological side of things. So when we keep on, when we keep on destroying, you know, uh, the land, for all our resources that we need for this anarchistic production system that we have, you know, if we keep on doing that, expanding into the forest, cutting it down, being coming closer to uh, animals that carry these diseases, uh, mostly from bats and everything, then of course it's only going to get worse and we get things like COVID, right? So it is all interconnected, huh? inequality, COVID, the ecological thing, which was actually the subject of your movie, right? That's yes. uh, what I thought was very to the point and uh, is also the reason why we are now here spreading your film to uh, to people that we know in education. Yes, Mark, and I think, I think the common denominator here is uh, A, the world is changing, and B, we're somehow in a, in a moment where we can appreciate the changes uh, and see it as interconnected, and see all these issues as perhaps uh, threatening, some of them more than others, and and see solutions that will that will really save the planet. And um, so I really appreciate what you're doing and what you will do. Um, and I think the common denominator for uh, both of us is to try to raise that awareness, to make people aware that they're not in a silo. Um, and that they have to go beyond what they what they learn in the classroom, and <laughs> take it out into the world and change the world. Uh, very important, and it's um, it's it's very important work, Mark. Thank you so much for doing it, and I am so happy that we connected through the uh, Colorado Environmental Film Festival. And I and I look forward to more with you. I do indeed, and I hope we can circle back and do some more together soon. Yeah, sure. So do I, by the way. So uh, definitely. Thanks. Thanks again for uh, for having me. How do you say uh, goodbye in, in Flemish, Mark? Uh, Goedenavond. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.